middle of a, a series right now. And, and the first week we just talked about fruit a little bit. And last, last week we, we talked about um, this basket here, which is no fruit. And, and, and pretty much what uh, statistics showed that 60% of all Christians are living in this basket. They're producing no fruit. And, and, and we talked a little bit about how that happens and, 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 and different things that, and how God responds to that. And in Hebrews it says that when we're not listening, because uh, the ultimate reason why we're not producing fruit is usually because sin is getting in the, into the way of our relationship with, with God. Pretty simple. And in Hebrews it says that God's going to rebuke, and he can chase him, and that he'll even spurge on us. So, in other words, he tries to get us attention when we're not doing what we need to be doing. You know, and his, his loving voice, you know, and the spirit, something in our lives, something that goes on, you know, is, you know, a throat's clear or, or whatever, and, 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 and we kind of Get a wake up call. We say we need to we need to get back connected to the vine. And then some of us we still don't get it. We we get chastened, and that's a, a kind of grounding, you know, maybe a chore to do, or you know. And I'm using examples like a, a father would to his kid, you know. You know, you're grounded from the TV for a while, or you're going to do dishes for a while. And then even after that, we don't listen a lot of times because I don't know. I don't know if it's my German in me or what, but sometimes I just didn't listen. And, and Dad used to say, well, son, you know, there's going to there's gonna be some pain involved now. <laughs> and, and there usually was. And uh, the thing is, I remember having that fear of being swatted. And in reality, I, 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 I think I, I, mean, I can only remember maybe twice that I actually was applied to physical pain on my butt. But the fear was there all the time. Now I want, I want us to be thinking this morning, because we're going to go from no fruit to how do we start producing fruit. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So look at, let's look at John 15. And this is the first time I've ever preached on three weeks in a row with less than a couple verses of scripture. I mean, I'm using a lot of scripture today, like I did last week, but based on, on what we have. But it's John 15, 2. It says he cut, cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be uh, even more fruitful. So we're going from that, that no not bearing fruit to, to fruit. And, and there's, a, there's a line in there that we have to, to be very conscious of. And um, let's look at Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 6 once. If you have your Bibles today, open, open them up. It says, Know that in your hearts, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God. Walking in his ways and revering him. Know that in your heart. Okay? Our relationship with the Lord is what? It's a heart thing. Know that your God will discipline. Now, the severity of that discipline is on the response that we give back. Amen? And it, and it has to be. We want to go... As a Christian person again, again, you know, this is a, this is a, the Christian people that we're talking about, the ones who are connected to the vine. Those, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who are in me, okay, I will be in them. In other words, those who said, Jesus, I want you in my life, this is who we're talking about. A lot of times... We look at God as, um, and, and to be honest, since about the 80s, it's really been hit hard about God's grace and his love. And he 
he's all those things. I'm not saying he's not. But we kind of forget about the discipline of God. We don't like to think that God still disciplines. We think, well, he died on the cross, we accepted him, and we're all covered. No matter what I do, no matter how I act. I'm telling you, there's consequences. There is consequences of our sin. And a lot of people say, well, sin's the same in God's eyes. Well, I'm telling you today, read your scripture. Because sin is not equal in God's eyes. How he forgives is equal in God's eyes. Okay? He forgives all sin equally because he died on the cross for us. But don't think for a moment, if I go and steal a pen, or if I bring a gun in and I shoot Quentin, that those sins are equal. It's not. It's not equal. Okay? So how we live and how we respond to God, respond to God we have to really get our head wrapped around this a little bit. Again, his forgiveness is the same. But the consequences aren't. You see, the reason why we have an empty basket is because something is separating us from God in order to produce good fruit, or fruit at all. And we have to sit back and, and really think about that. And you think, well, I don't think you're right, Scott. And you know what I say? I have scripture to back it up. So let's look at 1 Corinthians. Let's look at 1 Corinthians once. This is Paul talking to Church of Corinth, okay? And it's a small church. It's probably this size, between, between 100 and 200 people. And, and they're just not doing things right. You see, in, in the church of Corinth, you had the rich people over here, and you had the poor people over here, or vice versa. I'm not I'm trying, to, trying to label people here. But that's how it was. You see, the rich people over here, they sat and they ate, and they had a good time, and, and they enjoyed themselves. And the poor people, they were starving to death. And the rich people could give a rip. This is what it says. It says, therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. Okay? Right away we're thinking, well, it's the Lord's Supper. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, we're talking about the Lord's Supper here, but, but what, even more than that, because we get stuck on that. We get stuck on that. that, that, that that's what it is. It, but it's communion with God. It's communion with one another. It's how we treat each other. It's the, it's the relationships that we're building up. No matter what bread you eat of, no matter what cup you drink of, is, is basically what it's talking about. It's not just talking, you know, the, 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 the Lord's Supper here. We look at it that way, and we have for years, you know, when we've, we've, we've done that. But what I'm talking about, they're sinning against their brother. But they don't think anything of it because they gather together in worship, okay? And everything's fine today. There's no consequence. And God says, there's going to be a consequence. There will be. Let's look at Numbers 12, 9 through 10. It says, the anger of the Lord burned against them. And he left them when the cloud lifted from above the tent. There stood Miriam, leprous like snow. Aaron turned, toward, uh, turned her and saw that she had leprosy. Now I want to go back to 1 Corinthians again real quick. I don't think I put this one in there. Put that 1 Corinthians back up again if you can. Here. It says, for whoever, uh, 
whenever you eat and, and drink of the bread, and drink of this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Okay, this is where I want you to listen to and write this down. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. What do you think that means? Does that mean if, I, if I'm sinning, I'm not repenting, and if I'm not turning my ways, that I could actually become weak? That I could actually physically become sick? That I could physically die? Yeah. That can happen. It says that. It's, it's pretty clear. And how do we tell that? If we go back to, to uh, Numbers again. This, this is what happened to Miriam. No, 
That doesn't mean keep doing it. When he lays out the rules, he doesn't mean go ahead and break them again. Why is it we do not think we're disciplined? Why is it that we think we have this, this God that just accepts everything that we do and how we do it? Because if that's the case, it's like, it's like putting God on a shelf like a little genie, isn't it? And we pull him off when, when we need him and, and, and when we want something. We sure go after him and pray for the healing and for, for all that kind of stuff. But boy, as soon as we're yes, everyone. And you know, you know what I've, I've seen over the years with, with, uh, with people, particularly um, young people? They're always the victim. Why is he doing this to me? Why are they going against me? Why is my life like this? I have a son that just struggles and struggles and struggles. And I hope you're listening and watching, Jeremy. We're taping this. When he was two years old, okay, I'm going to give you, for instance, here. When he was two years old, just starting to talk, we were in Black River Falls, and my brother was there. And it was right around Christmas time. And Jeremy comes walking downstairs, and I said, Jeremy, what are you doing now? God told me I'm supposed to be in ministry. I'm supposed to be a pastor. I said, well, how God tell you that? He said, well, you just told me. I said, well, where did he tell you? In my room. If you think God cannot call you at a young age to do ministry, we're also mistaken. He's called Samuel at a young age. He's called David at a young age. There's a lot of people that he's called at a young age. Jeremy's been fighting 27 years. 27 years. He's been fighting the fact that he's supposed to be doing ministry. He's living this good life he shouldn't be living. He's doing things that he shouldn't be doing sometimes. And every time I get phone calls, he says, Dad, why is my life such a mess? Why am I broke all the time? I'm, I'm working all the time and I'm, I'm trying to pay my bills. Why does my back hurt? I'm a young man. He's being disciplined. Yeah, I do. And I tell him that. He don't like to hear that. But you know what? He won 100 bucks in the lottery one day. Dad, he won $100 in the lottery. Use words like a blessing and, and look what God did. Really? I mean, seriously, you, I mean, we, we love to give God all that credit for all that good stuff that, that happens. But when we're not living in the vine, when we're not feeding off of that vine, and we're not doing the things, and then things happen to us. And again, it's not just physical, that's just one, one scripture I use. I guess I wanted to go at the level of, of really just, but financially, all that stuff. He's going to discipline. He's going to take away. He's going to say, are you listening yet? He's going to take a little bit more. You don't listen. Are you listening yet? I don't know. You know, it, it's so, lot, so much easier when that vine hits the ground, it's in the mud, and, and he says, I, I, I lift it up, and I clean it off. If he's so a lot, so lot easier world in, 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 in life with Christ, if we just responded at that point. But we don't. We, we tend to not. So you're thinking, man, God's a tough guy. How do I make it right? How do I go from Producing no fruit, but producing some fruit. Let's look at Luke 19, 8 once. It says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. 
And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will, I will pay back. I will do restitution. That's why coming before the Lord is so important because we are all sinners. And I'm, I'm just as good as any one of you guys. Matter of fact, I put the money on me because I mess up a lot. But I spend an awful lot of time on my knees too. Because that's the way you restore. That's the way you respond to God discipline. Because he doesn't have to get to the, 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 the hard discipline area. Right? Because God can go, <clears throat> Quentin, and you respond. If you don't respond, then he's going to go further. If we respond and we get on our knees and we repent, he restores. And that's where he takes that garbage that's causing us to stop you from being before God on a, on a daily basis and, and going to him when we do mess up. That's when he takes that item and, and he uses that pruning shoe and he clips it off. It's painful, okay? It'll be painful because we sure like living in sin. I mean, the light is so much better. And he prunes that and he, and, he, and he restores. And all of a sudden, after he prunes that back a little bit, now, now, a, now a bud comes out and, and little fruit starts happening. You see, that's how we go from no fruit actually fruit. Let's be real clear on, on what kind of God we got. He sent his God, his, his son, to die on that cross for us. That's how much he loved you. He gave us an out. There's no wrath no longer. He said, I removed the wrath. He says, now I got love. But my love is going to have discipline. And you better believe it. I will apply it. Why? Because he loves us. And he wants us connected to the vine. So we have a real choice here. Some of us might be so far over that, and yeah, maybe, maybe physically, you just aren't doing well. Maybe financially, you're not doing well. Maybe relationship-wise, you're not doing well. That's when you sit back and say, you know what? How am I connected to the vine right now? Have I actually seek repentance for how I'm acting? Have I actually been restored, or am I seeking restoration? Or am I just going to continue living the way I'm living? You see, we need to decide ourselves <coughs> to move. We're the ones who have to, have to look at our life. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, 31, 32 ones. 1 Corinthians 11, 31, 32. It says, but if we judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. All right? In other words, if you actually do a turnabout with how you're living, God doesn't have to judge you then because you've already done it. You've already restored. You've already repented. You've already went towards the cross. When you are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined. Okay? So that we will not be condemned with the world. It's his wake-up call. He's going to discipline us. I did make up those words. It's biblical. We either choose to live in the vine, or we choose not to. We talked about priorities this week with our um, with our leadership, and we had some good 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 talk on it. But I think everyone, I know everyone, agreed. Priority number one starts with our relationship with God, and then your priorities come off of that. Other things that are important. God is number one. It has to be number one. God said, I will be number one. You will not have any other gods before me. And if you do, you're going to be disciplined. Oof. I don't want that. 
So we need to make some decisions here in how we live it. And, and our discipline might be real slight right now. It might be, might be you know, just, just that, that rebuking. That, are you guys paying attention? Okay? You might be chasing right now. I pray none of you are being, being scourged right now. The scripture last week in Hebrews says, who will be scourged? Everyone. It said everyone. So we will go through that at some point. And, and again, it might not be as severe as a physical death or physical pain. I mean physical uh, uh, ailments or something. But it's going to hurt. <coughs> There's going to be pain there. There will be something that's missed and, and lost. I don't want to get to that point. I don't want to tick off my daddy that, that much. Every night, you see when I'm connect, connected to the vine, and, and that's where I end up each day. I start my day each, each time there. I stay connected to the vine. And I stay conscious of what I need to do to restore myself to that vine, to Christ. What do I need to do in my life in order to, to do that? Because it says repent and turn from your evil ways. Okay? <coughs> Repentance is a huge thing. We need to say, Lord, man, I messed up. And repentance also means to be turned the other way. Turn from it. So we try not to continue doing the same, same thing over and over again. Because if we continue doing the same thing over and over again, many, what's the definition of that? It's crazy, right? Yeah, she's in that field. so, And she probably sees that all the time. Quit doing the same thing. We wouldn't be in the same place. But we do. I was listening. I was just ear dropping in town this morning with your group. I continue to do the same thing over and over again, even though I shouldn't do it. Paul, Paul struggled with it. You know? Why do you think we want? So don't put yourself so high up there that says, man, I don't have I don't have no problem. Finances might be fine right now. Your 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 health might be fine, and maybe that was blessings already that God had given you when you were connected to the vine. But you've been <coughs> living away from the vine. What God can give us, He can what? Take it away. Man, stay connected to the vine, because to be honest with you, the whole thing here, what we're doing from. I want you to think of it this way. No blessing, abundant blessings. Your cup overfloweth over on this end. So we're going to keep working our wealth way there. So if you restore yourself, if you ask for forgiveness, if you redeem yourself, if, if you actually get restored by the Lord, now you're producing some fruit. And when you start producing some fruit, you see you get hungry. You get hungry for what the Lord has for you. You don't settle for a little bit. You want more. And when you get more, you don't get settled for that either. You want much. And there's so much abundant fruit out there that God has for us. I mean, he'd rather work through us here than spending all that time on us over here. God says, just get it. Just be obedient to me. I don't have to discipline. It's the same way when we're kids, you know. We get so much more if we're listening and, and behaving. We get so little down here. I mean, really, it's a, it's like a no-brainer. But just like when I was a kid and I didn't get it, sometimes I don't get it as an adult until you swat it. Where's your life this morning? Where's your heart? See, that's what God wants is your heart. Are you giving it to him? Are you totally committed to him? Do you need restoring this morning? And we encourage you again, if you need time, altar time, use it. You need to get before the Lord and just say, Lord, man, I'm sorry for how I'm living. Come up and do it. If you've wronged someone, 
in your church family or your family. Seek redemption. Call them, text them, ask them, please forgive me. Make it right, is what God says. Restore that relationship. It doesn't matter if someone hurts me, how do I respond to that? How do I deal with it? Do I lash back? Or do I love? Because I'm producing fruit. And good fruit. Because if you're not producing any fruit right now, I know how you're going to respond to something that happens in your life. And God knows. As we close this morning, I want you to think where your heart is. Am I doing what I need to to stay connected to the vine? Is God priority number one in my life? Am I putting him first? Am I, am I there before and after the day is done? And how is God using me? How is re, how's re, he restoring me? Because I guarantee you, if you're producing no fruit at the moment, You'll feel a whole lot different when you start producing fruit. And like I said, it'll be painful for a little bit because you'll be doing a little fruit and get rid of the, rid, rid of the, rid of the trap in your life. You'll so, get rid of it. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I want that. And God said, no, you don't. Just trust me. Just let me prune that. We'll get rid of that. And we'll, we'll, we'll throw it in the fire and get rid of it. And just, just give it a little time. Because that fruit, because you're in the vine, it's going to start producing some Stand with me. Again, the altar's open. Where you're at is open. Do whatever you need to. Again, if you're at a point of needing to be restored, and I think I think we all do daily. So, but I mean, if, if you have just really pulled yourself away from the the true vine and, and kind of living your life for you, I encourage you to come to the altar. Think back to the Old Testament where it was so important. It was such a holy place that people came and they knelt and and, and they gave thanks to God. And, and they, they seek you know, forgiveness and 